Alright guys, welcome back to a new video. So first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. This is the most I've actually grown in a month, probably since the start of my channel. It might not seem like much to like some other YouTubers who grow like insanely quickly, but honestly, thank you guys for the support. So today I'm going to be doing a solo UHC guide. Um, currently I'm number 4 on the lifetime wins leaderboards, and then number 5 on the kills. So um, hopefully this is good information, you know, hopefully this is helpful. So I'm going to be doing three different parts in this video. I'm going to be doing a shop guide for part one. Um, then I'm going to be doing a kit slash strategy guide. And then I'm also going to be giving you guys tips for actually when you're in the solo UHC game. Because obviously I've played a lot of games of solo UHC. I'll put on how many exact games at this point that I've actually played of solo UHC. It's really an embarrassing amount. But um, yeah, uh, I have like a list of like small mistakes that a lot of uh, new players make that would probably have a huge impact on your game. So hopefully this is useful. If it is, leave a like, and um, yeah, hopefully you guys do enjoy. All right, so when it comes to the UHC shop, the first thing you wanna do is actually just check if you have any arcade coins. Um, a lot of people who get into UHC have been playing on Hypixel before, so they'll probably have around 100K. Um, that's what a lot of my friends have had, so yeah. Um, basically just go into shop, go into convert coins, and then just convert all of the coins to UHC. Um, that you have. Currently I have 38k. Um, what I'd also recommend is just doing your daily quests. Uh, it gives you like 5,000 arcade coins, but then just from winning the games you usually get about 15,000, which gives you a few extra coins. The next thing to do is go into the main lobby and check if there's an event. Currently there's a Halloween event on in the Hypixel main lobby, um, so this means that- WHY AM I LAGGING?! So currently there's a Halloween event on in the main lobby. Um, basically you get XP from getting all of the ghosts and finding all of them, and then that can obviously level you up and it means that you can um, get more arcade coins if you see in the leveling rewards. It's actually super easy to get like the first, you know, 10 rewards or whatever. So you get 10,000 arcade coins and then another 12,000 um, and you can convert all of them. So that, that's pretty useful. Also, if you guys have even more time um, before you actually want to play your UHC, this is optional. I'd recommend just going into like Sky Wars and um, just doing your daily quests to get XP because, you know, network levels just give you so many coins, you can convert them all to UHC. So now you've got as many coins as you can pretty much get without actually playing any UHC games. Um, you want to go into shop. I pretty much recommend just buying every single first um, craft. Uh, they only cost like 50 coins each to like 100, 125 coins. I'm pretty sure in Bloodcraft it costs 250, yeah. So the first thing you want to do is just buy every single first unlock of every single profession. Another thing that's also your choice, but in my opinion is a good thing to do, is go into Alchemy and buy the first ever one because that means that you can actually drink potions. So if you manage to kill someone with like a chest of fate or like a healing potion, it actually won't have any effect until you buy this endurance perk. I don't know if that actually happens anymore, but it definitely used to happen like a few months ago. So just to be safe, you might as well buy endurance one, um, which lets you, you know, extend your potions. So um, after that, I'd recommend going for quick pick. Uh, it's just a pretty, you know, useful craft. I don't know how much it costs. It costs 2,500. So in my opinion, the first thing that you should do in um, UHC is to get the quick pick, so just go into toolsmithing and then upgrade all the way to that. The second thing I'd recommend you doing is just buying one level of speed mining. Uh, this means you get haste, so if you're mining a big vein of iron it'll actually help out so much and it just makes it a lot easier and quicker. Then you want to go into enchanting and upgrade all the way until light anvil. Um, that should cost you around 2,000 coins. And then after you've got light anvil, you're going to want to go into weaponsmithing and upgrade all the way to book of sharpening and then book of power. But if you don't have enough for that, um, just buy whatever suits your playstyle more, sharpening or power. And then buying these professions will cost you around like 7,000 coins or something. Um, and it means that you can do a successful iron rush pretty easily. Um, the next thing you want to do is just select your kit to be archery. I wouldn't recommend upgrading it at this point, but I know a lot of people see uh, YouTubers play with stone gear, but honestly stone gear is only really useful when you have um, prestige 2 engineering because it means you get haste 2 and then you can just like instant mine gravel. Um, it's just like way quicker and there's not really much point unless you have that. So don't upgrade stone gear unless you really want to. And then after that pretty much, um, there aren't that many crafts that I'd recommend getting. Um, you might want to get protection book as well. And then what you're going to want to do is just upgrade vitamins as much as you can. And you just want to keep upgrading vitamins until you get light apple. Um, this is probably the best craft if you want to do some brushing. I know a lot of people like, you know, doing like certain strategies and like watching people's videos and saying like, oh, I'm going to do a tablet's rush. But realistically, 
the best way to win games on an account that doesn't have many stars or many crafts is just to buy the light apple and just do an anvil rush and hopefully get some cleans and just be really conservative with your healing. I actually had to play on my alt account when I lost this account a few months ago and I had to start completely from scratch and I got three solo wins in like four days or something of playing so that was literally just by doing this. So I just got as many vitamins as possible um, because these just give you absorption, uh, it's pretty useful. So after upgrading cooking completely to get light apple, um, I'd recommend probably going for Philosopher's Pickaxe. Um, that just means you get even more haste by upgrading this. And then you can also, you know, duplicate diamonds. It's pretty useful in my opinion. Now I'm finished with the shop guide. Um, I'm going to be teaching you guys about all of the different strategies that I think are plausible. Now in UHC, especially solo UHC, there are so many strategies that I've tried. Um, I'll give you guys like a summary of the five most uh, common ones. And yeah. All right, so the first strategy I'm gonna be talking about is anvil rushing or iron rushing. They're pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna talk about them in the same sort of category. So basically to do this, um, you don't really need that many crafts unlocked. You can do this with all of the crafts that I showed you to get. And it only costs about 10,000 coins or maybe like 15,000 coins to really do this. So that should be quite easy for you guys to get. This just consists of getting like six to 12 sugarcane. If you're a low star, then Probably six sugarcane is fine to get like a power two or a sharp two. But if you're a high star, then 12 sugarcane and making a sharpness three. Um, the way you make the sharpness three is just by getting a prestige on the weaponsmithing thing. But I'm pretty sure most of you guys will know that. So this strategy can be done with two different kits. It can be done with stone gear and it can be done with archery. So archery is obviously if you want to have a bow. Um, in my opinion, iron rushing with archery is way better if you're a low star. It lets you conserve your healing way more if you need to. And it also lets you play aggressive by just rushing a sharp three. Because realistically, the time that you save when going stone gear isn't really that big. Um, if you just get slightly lucky and find a cave, then archery is just fine. Like, I go archery a lot and win a lot of games with archery. So after you've got your 6k and you just want to go mining, make an anvil, make your sharpness books, and then try and get up like one or two minutes after PvP. But yeah, as you're running into 0-0, zero, zero, you'll probably find someone and then you can have a fight and then, you know, head to 0-0 zero, zero and just keep snowballing. In my opinion, with this strategy, you can win around 20, 10 to 20 percent of your games as a high star. Like, that's probably how much I win nowadays, just because there are so many cheaters, but, you know, if you get lucky, you can usually win about around half of your games if you're good enough. So the next strategy that I'm going to be talking about that's also plausible is going to be tablets rushing. Now, um, this is a strategy that quite a few people have been doing recently. Um, I made a video on it, like, a year ago, and it got, like, a lot of views, and a lot of people find it quite fun to do. And it's a very luck-based strategy, but if it goes right, then it's almost a guaranteed win. Um... I've got probably around 40 solo wins from doing this strategy, uh, and I only recently started doing it. It's quite fun, I'm not gonna lie. When you're like sick of just cheaters and like people cleaning you, it's just, you know, unstoppable. To do this strategy, you need pretty much a max shop. You need the uh, Tablets of Destiny unlocked. You need a Dragon Sword unlocked. Um, and that's pretty much it, but like you need a, you need a max shop. So if you're new to UHC, don't consider this strategy. Um, you wanna go Prestige Looter. Um, and that can give you an ink sack or feathers or a magma cream, but realistically the only two useful ones are ink sacks and feathers. Then you just want to find a cowl um, and then just the rest of the stuff to make a book and quill. You need to get a bow somehow, so you can either mine one iron pack, go up and shear sheep, or just try and get lucky on the ground and then get up as quick as possible. Yeah, if anyone doesn't know what tablets is, then it's basically just a book that has fire aspect, power, sharpness three, and protection on it, but you only really want to put it on a sword. Um, power three isn't really too useful. On Hypixel UHC, people aren't used to fire aspects, so you can usually drop anyone by having a fire aspect if you run up behind them and they try and run away. Um, fire ticks also mean that people don't take much knockbacks, so. It just means that you can constantly stab people in the back and then drop them. In my opinion, I went around 30 to 40% of my games doing this strategy. The next strategy I'm going to be talking about is um, enhancement book rushing. Um, I probably don't have that many clips of this. I made one video doing it. Um, but basically, it means you need to get around like 50 to 60 cane and then make three bookshelves, um, keep one book left over to make an enchantment table and then craft the enhancement book craft. A lot of people do double of this and then what they do is they just put one of it on a bow and then put another on a bow. So the other strategy that I'm going to be talking about is just like an extended anvil rush. So what you want to do is you want to get eight sand before you go down um, and then one orange die. Um, and then basically what you can do with that is if you find an ender pearl or a creeper um, or both, 
then you can either make Book of Thoth, which is a fire aspect book. I'd always recommend getting 8 sand if you have Dragon Sword unlocked. Um, it just means that you can craft a Blaze Rod as soon as you find a Creeper, and it's quite likely that you'll find a Creeper. I guess I want to talk a little bit about Iron Rushing. So I've done this strategy a lot, but I mainly only do it if either I'm forced to or if I spawn next to horses. Um, horses mean that you can just take like very little damage if you're good with a bow on horses, and it just means that you can snowball really well if you find like unskilled players. So yeah. Um, those are the four main strategies that I do in Solar UHC, and I wouldn't really consider doing anything else. Those are like the main ones if you want to get wins, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So the first tip that I'm going to give you guys if you're in a game is if you're close to the end of the game, maybe like 10 minutes to the end of the game, and you've just been drained of all of your healing, but you have really good gear. A lot of people go caving if they're in this position, um, just to find more gold, but usually it only ends up with them getting like one more gap or maybe like nothing. I'd honestly say that just stay up. Like, I seriously can't remember the last time that I dug down for healing, apart from, like, back in the day when Soli UHCs had, like, 20 minutes till deathmatch when you found when there were only, like, five people left. A lot of people go caving when they're stacked. Honestly, just don't. Like, it, there's just no point. You might as well just try and find, you know, like, bad players. Um, you might as well just share for some apples, depending on how long you have. Um, it just wastes time, and, you know, usually in that point in the game, there are people running around not knowing what, they, what they're doing, so you can just get a play ahead. Another thing that I'd recommend doing is if you know that there's a bee hopper in the game and you know that someone's getting like 10 kills or something already, carry a shovel and a pickaxe in your hole bar. It's a pretty basic thing to do, but if you run into a bee hopper and they're running towards you, just dig straight down. Don't place a block on top of you, just dig straight down into a one by one. And then the bee hopper usually will just jump down there and then you can just out gear them usually. Um, sometimes you can out melee them if they're like, you know, not very blatant, but yeah, just digging a like a really deep one by one so they can't three block you, um, and then just keep, and then like I just recommend digging even further down um, if they dig down like not next to you but the block like far away, further away so they can three block you. I'd either recommend digging further down or like making an obby trap that they can fall into. One other thing that I've died to so many times with so much gear is people with god apples. It doesn't really happen as much in solo UHCs, but if someone just makes a one by one dug down um, and you're obviously not cheating then don't jump down ever. Um, maybe just dig like next to them so you have enough room to build back out. But usually they'll either have a Notch Apple or like Fate or Deuce or something. Um, I've lost so many games to that, so I definitely recommend just never jumping into a one by one with someone unless you know that they've just been in a fight. The other thing that I'd say is learning to obby trap. Um, the best way you can really do this is just by practicing in solo Skywars. Um, you can just get like a water bucket by just, you know, going the, you can get a lava bucket by going the pyro kit and then you can just practice obby trapping by, you know, making people chase you, jumping into like a one by one, like a three by one and then placing a block and then just obby trapping them. That's actually how I got good at it, I'm going to be honest. I also played in Ranked Skywars doing it. Um, I tried to get like as much racing as I could by just obby trapping, but it didn't really work that well. It made me quite fast at it. Doing this before PvP can sometimes help you out so much. Like the amount of times I've got like two diamond pieces from just obby trapping is like insane. So I'd recommend getting really good at that if you're a silly UHC player. Um, honestly, that's about it. Um, if you're a new player, I'd recommend just playing as many games as you can over and over again. Um, and then eventually you just get, you know, game sense. That's literally it. Like, I used to be so terrible, but I used to be okay at PvP because I used to play Blitz before. Um, but, you know, just find the strategy that works best for you. Maybe alternate, just so you don't get bored. And just play as many games as you can, and then eventually you'll just pick up Game Sense. And maybe you can be as crazy as me. I'm joking. I just played a lot, you know.